Hi guys, this is Jeff from Railway City Hobbies. It is April the 16th, 2018, and tonight uh, Boston plays Toronto, and uh, I'm wearing my team colors for uh, Toronto tonight, and I'm hoping we get a win in Game 3. But that's not why I'm doing the video tonight. The uh, product we're covering tonight is the Rapido GMD SW1200 RS. These locomotives were made in London, Ontario, starting in 1955 in the 1200 series. Uh, these specific ones, the CN uh, 1300 series, started production in London in um, the second half of 1958. As delivered, this is the green and gold paint scheme. From this, they would have went to um, the wet noodle, which was introduced in around 1961. Not all of them got painted this, this quickly. Some of them were in the green and gold for, uh, midway through the 60s. So you'd have the black cab and the CN noodle. Next progression with that is the The red cab, again CN noodle, and then the last paint scheme would be the CN North America North America paint scheme. So you have the signature white stripe, and again CN wet noodle. Some of these are still in existence uh, to the to this day, uh, either in the CN North America paint scheme or the red cab. These locomotives are very, very Canadian locomotives. Uh, they serve from east coast to west coast, uh, CN and CP, um, but we're doing a CN video today. The CP ones uh, won't be out till roughly June. Um, they're expecting them in Rapido Warehouse sometime in late May, uh, but for safe standards we'll say June. The CN ones uh, never really got ditch lights, whereas the CP ones did. As such, uh, none of them come factory equipped with ditch lights. So, without further ado, we're going to uh, head on over to Pierre Oliver's uh, house uh, so we can do uh, a little bit of running on his uh, Cayuga sub. Right now, we don't have a layout uh, built at the store presently. Uh, we're still in renovations, uh, still setting up new displays. Uh, we hope to build a uh, layout in the future in the basement here, uh, depicting 1958 uh, Chatham sub, um, which will feature uh, Chatham as the centerpiece uh, and uh, going west towards Windsor. Uh, the operations uh, will ship will, on the actual layout will be uh, Wabash and uh, CNR. So without further ado, we'll take it on over to uh, Pierre's and we will do uh, look at all the sound features, the de uh, some of the detail features of this locomotive, the lighting features. Uh, we'll do uh, the typical run-by uh, so you can see the details for yourself up close and personal. And uh, we will do the pull test uh, and weigh it. So we'll be on our way over to Pierre's. We'll be right back. All right, so now we're at uh, Pierre Oliver's uh, Cayuga sub layout. Uh, currently, they're, uh, he's in the transition of changing uh, what he's modeling, so the staging yard is empty, and that's where we're filming right now. Um, so one of the first things about this uh, locomotive is the stacks are interchangeable. So in the actual in the actual box in, in a little dime bag you got four sets of stacks. This is the correct uh, for, by prototype these are the round uh, stacks um, but they're easily changed and the every locomotive uh, all the CN ones come equipped uh, out of the factory in box with the tapered stack. 
Also, um, just pop it off there. Pop it off. There we go. It also comes with the stubby stack. Um, some of them uh, ran with stubby stacks later on. And it also comes with uh, the stack that would have been right from the factory. Now, uh, to my knowledge, none of them got had this, this stack. The earlier um, earlier number series, the, the 1200s, uh, I believe at 1298 they stopped using that stack. Um, but you can put it on if you like. So we'll put back on the original stack. The, the, round, uh, the round stack uh, that is uh, accurate for this locomotive. Another thing it comes with is the uh, extra uh, different rad cabinets, um, which you'd have to replace, take these out and put the the taller cabinets in, and then you got um, the, do uh, the you can put these covers on, and uh, we'll show you a picture um, of what they look like um, by the production, uh, what they should look like installed. As well in the package, there's extra windows and let's kind of get these apart here. There's your uh, like if you want to uh, put the winterization window, like the actual extension onto the window, that's your piece there. An extra stanchion, uh, the MU tower. You can see it there. There's two of them and. To my knowledge, we have, I haven't figured out what this part is yet. Um, it looks like it may be an interior floor piece. It's, I'm unsure yet. Um, this locomotive comes with the uh, Sinclair uh, Sinclair antenna, three chime horn, your your bell. You got lift rings there and there. The handrail itself is metal and the stanchions are plastic. We'll see this on the other side. You got lots of under, uh, lots of piping. You got your speed recorder back here. Uh, your uh, flex foil trucks. Uh, see through um, step tread at the bottom here and also see, uh, see through uh, tread on the ends of the pilot. You got your MU hoses on the end, your uh, step, like your actual walkway step. Do, do, do. Your bug eyed uh, marker light, or sorry, your bug eyed class light there. A couple of cut lever here in the front as well. As well, in the, one of the uh, dime bags with the extra stacks, you get your re-railer, two of them, to install on your own. Uh, your, the plastic Mc, uh, the, um, Mc, McDonald Cartier coupler there. Sometimes you like it, sometimes you hate it. On the other side of the coupler, you can see the actual chain line hose. We'll see that uh, from the rear end. Alright, so now we're at the back of the locomotive. And you can see your number boards there. You can see your train line hose there. You got your uh, correct snow plow on it. It wouldn't be really much of a snow plow, but anyways. Again, you got your MU hose on the rear. Your um, <coughs> your handrail, and you got a textured surface on the walkway going up into the cab. You got wipers individually added wipers on each side here lots and lots of detail you can even see the fire extinguisher right there again bug-eyed marker lights so we're gonna flip the locomotive around right in here and we're gonna show you the east the actual handrail now I'm just gonna reposition the camera again if you notice, there's actually a stanchion mission, and the actual handrail, as you can see, is metal. 
I, uh, I this one, this locomotive specifically, the stanchion had sh uh, slipped a little bit, so I just took it off completely, and I'm just going to reattach it with CA again. Um, but so how they do this, and this is the same with the uh, B367, is they make the handrail and then they actually mold on the plastic stanchions to it. And on this side of the locomotive, again, you can see separately applied grab irons. There's a separately applied grab iron there as well. Lots of uh, detail for the um, for the piping there. You got your uh, the EMD symbol. This is um, GR12R, which is number series 1303 through 1333. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually apply power to the track. So as soon as you apply power to the track, the number boards come on automatically and the truck lights are on automatically with, uh, as soon as you apply the track power. I'm going to fix that there. And so we are going to uh, fire up the locomotive. Alright, so we're going to start with the bell, which is F1. The three chime horn. F3, we're going to actually have to move the locomotive to demonstrate it. Is flange squeal. which would be is great when you're using this uh, in the going around a corner or going through a bunch of switches uh, using it as an actual switcher uh, instead of a road switcher so you, that's I love that set those sounds F4 is drive hold which we'll cover later on uh, F5 is the Doppler horn We're going to turn the front headlight on. F7 is the dimmer. F9 is the class light. The bug eye class light. Uh, F10 shuts off the actual number boards. F11 is the cab light, which will turn around so you can actually see that. Uh, F12 will turn on switching mode, which turns on the light, uh, the light in the forward and reverse direction. So with the cab light, it's turned on with F11. And it makes it so much easier to see inside the actual cab. Um, of, this, of this locomotive and again you'll see the the class lights there now again this now that we're in reverse we can fire up as soon as we put it in a different direction the ca uh, the actual class lights go out We're actually going to be able to demonstrate the independent brake and all the other uh, functions above F12. Uh, we're just going to use the programmer instead. So, F16.
Your guess is as good as mine what this even is supposed to represent. Okay. F-17. Way up. And we're on our way to the castle. I'll hurry over first and go in the back door so I can let the drawbridge down and open the big front doors for you. Are you ready? Here's my castle. That would be from the Friendly Giant. And F-18. Now everybody's gone. Good so, day. Good day. Uh, that would be from uh, Bob and Doug McKenzie. From, uh, that would be a blurt from Second City. So we're going to turn the Prime Mover back on. Uh, we're going to demonstrate F-15, the independent brake, as I just spoke about a few minutes ago. So, so right now we're at speed step four. We also did do the uh, a CV fifty four to zero to set the back EMF. So uh, she it, it does creep along really nicely once you do that. Better uh, than out of the out of the box. It sets the back EMF for that. So F-15, we'll engage it. So it makes the uh, brake sounds, applies the brake, and the brake will actually release on its own. And continue down the track. This is uh, was beneficial for a lot of people because if you actually engaged it and uh, it wouldn't move anywhere, it would notch up, you'd hear the sounds trying to notch up, it would never go anywhere. And uh, I like this, the independent brake now in this set, uh, because sometimes you put it on and you, can't, you wonder why is it moving and you realize it's the independent brake still engaged. So now we're going to actually use the drive hold again, if you're not familiar with drive hold. Uh, when you engage it, it locks the speed of the locomotive at the whatever speed step you're on and it will stay at that speed step until you disengage it. So we're going to engage the, uh, the drive hold at F, like at zero. And now we're going to manually notch it up. So we're at notch 8, and we're going to pull it back down to 0. Alright, so we've heard all the uh, prime rubber noises, all the uh, brakes, brake squeal and all the lighting functions. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do a little bit of running around here on his, on his layout to uh, take some uh, video. 
and then we're going we're also going to fix that uh, put that reattach that stanchion uh, so coming up we're going to do the uh, slow motion or slow uh, side run by so you can see all the detail up close uh, we're going to weigh, weigh this locomotive uh, we'll do the, do the uh, pull bar test and then We'll be right back. Uh, we'll get set up for the uh, to do a little bit of run shots.
So we have the uh, push-pull set up. And so we'll just turn on the uh, pull meter. All right, and we'll dial it up. All right, that's a 50 gram pull. Okay, next pull coming up. Another 50 gram pull. Set the hook. And last pull. And we got a 45 on this one. Alright, we're gonna spin it around. Not so much glare in this part. Alright, first push. Fifty grams. Got her back to zero. Looks like a forty five. And our final push coming up. And the last push uh, results in a 50 gram push as well. So both cases we had two 50s and a single 45. Um, we'll, resume, we'll presume at 50. Now these results uh, 50 grams is nothing to sneeze at, and considering we're dealing with a SW1200 switcher, um, how short wheelbase it is and how low the hood is, uh, this is quite a feat. Um, if you think that the uh, Rapido FA2, uh, if you watch previous videos, full, uh, full, uh, full body locomotive, was pulling a 65. Um, this is actually very, very well done. Uh, we're going to weigh it shortly, so we'll be right back and we'll get the scale set up just to uh, get the weight and then we'll go over. Uh, I'll give you my thoughts and uh, run the video up. We'll be right back. Alright, we're going to now weigh this locomotive. So, this locomotive weighs. 304 grams and for those who like ounces 10.7 ounces now considering that we're dealing with a small four axle locomotive 
and you don't have lots of room in the underneath the hood or the in the length uh, of the locomotive to put a lot of weight in it. Uh, ten point seven ounces is, is is pretty good. Uh, when I was testing it out on uh, Pierre's layout, uh, it was pulling pretty good. And in real in real life, uh, they're not meant to pull large cuts of cars on their own. Oftentimes, you see these running back to back out on the branch line doing a uh, turn job. Um, oftentimes, this actual uh, these uh, specific locomotives back in the the 50s and 60s would run out uh, to Chatham on the uh, Chatham Turn. Uh, they were all over Canada. They used them everywhere. There were a lot of them made. Uh, a lot of different variations. Um, but I hope that uh, Rapido, what now with this chassis and this locomotive, the trucks, maybe we'll see the 1200RM, the later the rebuilds, and maybe we'll even see the uh, the sweep. Um, here's hoping. Even though it's not my era, it's one of those truly iconic uh, Canadian locomotives. Overall, I think Rapido's done a very good job on these locomotives. Um, the new addition of the metal handrail is a great addition um, instead of the uh, plastic one. The, the, again, the stanchions are still plastic, um, and if they do come loose, uh, you can re adhere them back on. They just snap on the wire and a little bit of CA. You're uh, back to the races. Um, you don't have to worry about so much about breaking your handrails. Plus, it does come with extra stanchions. Um, comes with the flags, uh, extra details, um, so that you can actually detail the locomotive you're looking for. Because some of them, in in my case, um, for my the uh, the Chatham sub, these were the proper um, rad housings. Um, Later on, they did get the uh, larger, uh, larger uh, red casings, and uh, you also had the uh, the covers that would uh, open and close um, for essentially it would be for snow or for uh, kind of like a car bra. If you guys, if you guys uh, automotive guys know what a car bra means, uh, they put it over the uh, uh, grill of your car so that your actual radiator heats up quicker. It's terrible if you leave it on in the summer because your car overheats. <laughs> Anyways, enough rambling on about that. <clears throat> uh, I look forward to the CP ones coming. Um, F6 on these locomotives does nothing because they none of them have ditch lights. The CP ones that have ditch lights, F6 is your ditch, uh, ditch light function. We'll do another video uh, showing that and recapping the uh, the uh, different models and the lighting outputs. Uh, we'll also be doing another video um, showing the actual different uh, paint schemes of these uh, locomotives in the future. And uh, with that, thanks for watching the video. I hope uh, you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free, and that's about it. Thank you for watching. Happy modeling.